Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple who love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life-changing challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse we packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert, curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, I trust your judgement, if you think I'll like it, put in an offer. The offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of June 2021. Join us and our dogs Merlo and Flora as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. To start the week off we're out and about this morning aren't we? We are. We are in the van. We have been to the tip. It was wonderful wasn't it? this year we've been to a brico shop so we've actually managed to do quite well avoiding them but now now it's time we need more stuff it's not stuff but it is stuff but... stuff that is just amazing this map is about to put another 35 kilos in One more, go on. Oh. Yeah, we're behind this man and he's in this really, really old Citroen car van and he has put that much concrete in the back of this car that the car is actually at this angle currently and it is hilarious. And good morning from the Maid on the Matra. I'm up, up in the attic again, uh, where last week you saw me start doing some of the insulation, um, which is the that sort of metallic foil multi-layer insulation, um, and then putting plasterboard on the top. Um, now, before I continue with that work, I just want to put some of the floorboards down because dangerous really having them all up i haven't i'm not going to put them all down yet because i still need them up to get some more wiring in place but uh, so i'm just going to put a few down today that's a lot better um, some of them are in pretty poor condition so um, they will need a bit of work um, or need replacing but at least I'm not going to fall down those holes just yet um, I'll put the rest of them namely over there I'll put the rest of them down once I've got the wiring in place so the wiring that I need those up for is there's a bedroom that Claire did some wallpaper stripping in and then the two new bathrooms that I'm going to create which is somewhere underneath that structure there but now I'm going to crack on with the insulation I want to share with you something last week I opened up a packet of insulation okay, found the instructions which turned out to be not really helpful 
I've opened up another packet and they've got the same not very helpful side but actual instructions on the other side so I've read them I've watched some more videos and I've seen some of your comments so thank you to those people that have and I've got a slightly amended strategy for fitting this insulation. So I'm going to fit the foil like I did before, but a Brico shop trip yesterday, I've come back with a load of these bits of wood, which I put on top of the foil and then the plasterboard. And now the effect of that is to create another, just a very small little air gap like that which apparently increases the effectiveness of the insulation. Um, I'll go into U numbers or R numbers and all of that kind of stuff if you want me to. You probably don't, so I won't. So anyway, you'll see how I do it slightly differently this week. Um, so yeah, gonna crack on and do that. So I've, as you see, fitted these battens on top of the foil and then when I put plasterboard up here, that will have then just a, a, a little air gap between the plasterboard and the foil, which helps with the insulation. So uh, that's why I've done that. It doesn't really add on to the amount of work. It's still a <laughs> colossal job. I'm over at our side of the house and I have a sneaky confession to make about something I've been doing. Um, after all of the excitement with the wallpaper in the Maison de Maitre lately, mm, there was a bit of an accident. This is not glamorous in any way, shape or form. It functions, bearing in mind that everything needs renovating. Um, and if we wanted to go to the toilet in the Maison de Maitre, it would be quite a trek during the night. So here we have our wonderful bathroom uh, with functioning shower and bath, with freshly painted ceiling from just before Christmas, because everything was a bit mouldy. And then just through the next door in a separate room is our toilet area. Um, it's really small. Hi Flora, thanks for coming. So there's no door on this toilet. Um, instead, there is, however, this sliding door, which slides shut and yeah, it's a degree of privacy. It's not great, um, but when there's only two of you here, it functions. Um, the wallpaper, the wallpaper is on the ceiling. Isn't that lovely? Uh, this has got nothing to do with the Maison de Maitre. This is just, I think what I would say, late 80s, early 90s wallpaper. And my little confession is whenever I've been going to the toilet, <laughs> I've, I've been peeling paper, <laughs> gradually peeling paper all the way around the room. <laughs> whenever I come in, I pee and peel. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 nothing special. It's a toilet. It would be lovely if it was a nicer toilet. But where I've peeled the paper, I thought I'd give it a quick a quick little makeover. I think we're going to live with this for a while longer. So it would be quite nice to have somewhere slightly more pleasant to do what you come in here to do. Um, I've already started taking the paper off, but really anything has got to be 
some kind of improvement on this. I'm starting to go around the room and to be honest with you this isn't going well it's not really wallpaper it's some kind of like rubbery vinyl backed hell paper that's been sent by Satan to challenge me um, yeah and where the room's that small it's kind of turning into a toilet sauna so I really want to get this done as quickly as possible but it's yeah taking a while I have though put some um, I put some washing up liquid and some disinfectant in this, some Zaflora. I can't say, it smells wonderful. I'm at the point of the day now where I'm just coming to make a cup of tea. Just have a little break before I go back and try and attack that ceiling or the wallpaper on the ceiling. No! In the space of the three hours that I have been in that little bathroom, you have managed to cause utter devastation, Mello and Flora. Uh, today you have managed to eat a quarter of a block of butter between you as well as a whole pack of cotton pads. Isn't that handy? I know, I know that you're the instigator. Wait until your father hears about this, Flora May. There we go, a bit more progress. Getting the hang of it now. Yeah. Well, light's starting to fade, so uh, I think I'll call it a day and crack on tomorrow. See? Uh, right, we, we were thinking you've had enough time off now. Yeah. About the time you come and did some work. Um, a, just a little bit of concrete mixing and we're going to lay those curb stones around the front garden. Um, so Saturday's looking a good day. If you're free on Saturday, looking, looking yeah. going to be double digit temperature and all that. And then we can also have a talk about what to do around the pool. Would that be all right with you? Your, your, your experience has been called upon, given that you are a retired professional from the industry. Right. Can you get up here for about 10? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Back in the toilet and I've managed to get everything off. Um, my next point of attack is going to be just along here. Um, there's basically a piece of wood which I think is like the corner of the room and there's some plaster next to it and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a light sanding down just so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Um, this window, you may be wondering where this window goes, it's a window to nowhere so you can open it and then it's very cold because it goes to 
the room in which this toilet room is housed in and out here yeah it is in the house as such but there's no insulation it's freezing and i've opened the window and it smells of mushrooms so look at that i shall be using one of my favorite products this is not a sponsored advert however i really like this it is astonish mold and mildew blaster it is a product from the uk from my cleaning cupboard and it really works so mold be gone Well, today I'm back in the attic of the Maison de Maitre, ready to do some more insulating. Right, well, that's now another section I've done. Um, so, yeah, I'm guessing getting on with it. Long way off finishing. Long way. One of the things to decorate this tiny toilet with is going to be some of the old illustration magazines. So I've just gone through some and I'm just about to cut some out. Righty then, let's start with some paint. So I've gone in really quickly with an accent colour called Coachella and now I'm going in with the main colour which is going to be Milltown. Now I would have liked a really really dark bottle green for this room but finding certain paint colours over here at semi short notice isn't particularly fun. I'm trying to talk... Next fun trick is wallpaper paste. I'm a good few hours into this now and I'm getting there slowly. I'm letting the paint dry, but the problem I'm actually having is the walls. Um, Nick's had this in the Maison de Maitre and now I'm having it in here where the paint is touching the wall, it's drying, but then it's not sitting on the wall it's just kind of peeling and cracking um it's just really where the wall is that dry it's not supporting the paint so i'm just going to keep flipping layering it on it's just yeah it's one of those things but it's just annoying i, I don't need this yeah that's what keeps happening it just keeps flaking
I am so gutted. I did, I did have a little cry earlier because I had high hopes for this being like a fairly easy, nice, quick, clean room to do. But look, this is two coats of paint and it's just, Tomorrow's another day. So, beautiful sunny day, a bit chilly, but there we go. Um, a while ago, we bought these curved sort of edging stones to go around this area at the front of the Maison de Maitre. Um, and over there, Got the services of father-in-law who's come up to give me a hand laying them so go and see what his opinion of it all is so fa father-in-law it's been a while since you've been up here what have you been doing not a lot Hibernating, there you go, you heard it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. This isn't me making up vicious rumours about him. Uh, you were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've cleaned the foss out. Well right. done. Uh, I saved 800 euros. Uh. Did it? Uh, what yeah. did you do with the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for you. I asked you to help me, but you didn't come. Oh, sorry, I didn't get didn't get that message. No, <laughs> cut some hedges back. Have you cut some grass? I could. Have you? Yeah. Very early for grass cutting, isn't it? Grass in France grows all year round. Does it? It grows more in winter than it does in summer. Ah. No. Haven't done much drinking. Have you not? No. Oh, are, you, are you short of whiskey? Yes. So are you giving me some? <laughs> well, you might if you do a fair day's work. Oh, what are you done? We've been here it's two midday. Hours now. It's midday. Look at it. Halfway through the working day. You, you told me to get here early. Yeah. I've got an hour's drive. To yeah. Get here. Right. Right. And what have we done since we got here? Well, I'm waiting for you. You were not, you were wrapping it in on. <laughs> I don't think he's doing a bad job actually. Um, seems to be quite neat. Lots of moans, but if you just see past that, he's, he's a white, he's a white worker. Well, I wouldn't say free, he's cheap, as long as he gets paid in whiskey. Available for hire throughout the Charente Maritime. 
Cognac is an alternative to whiskey. Right, I'm going to tell you something to those people who are thinking of buying a chateau. In a village near where I live, there was a chateau that came up for sale. And this chateau had all been done up. Two bankers, a banker and his wife, but they were both bankers, bought it and they did it all up. I mean, even the buildings had had new oak doors fitted to it. There was 13 bedrooms, all new central heating, um, all new plumbing, all the bathrooms to go with the bedrooms. The bankers both died. Uh, they were nice people, actually. And it came on the market for sale by their children. And it was priced at 1.5 million. A friend of mine, a French farmer, and his wife looked at it. And his wife was going to say, they'll turn it into an old folks home, basically. Uh, he put in an offer of 650,000 because he knew he would have 10% to add on to that for other costs, taxes and that, but also he was going to have to put a lift system in. The people refused it. It then went, it was still on the market. A year later, it sold. It sold they, they came, actually, they came back to our friends and said, would you like to buy it, right? We, and in the meantime, they'd got other things. So it, it sold to some other people for 400,000 euros. All I'm saying to you people, if you're looking, even these ones that are 1.34 million, they're hard to sell, right? So you can maybe pick up a real, real bargain. You're better off looking at cheaper property, not chateaus. I've lived here for 21 years now, and I've seen a lot of disappointed people. You people who are going to do this, be careful and don't be frightened pricing things there you go you've been told well i've mixed up some concrete today uh father-in-law has done the hard work and look at it isn't that wonderful so thank you father-in-law and oh look at that Lovely sunset. Cool. Great. Hi, and welcome to Wine of the Week. And we're back on the wine again this week. Hey. Now, this is a Chilean Sauvignon Blanc, a, a very nice white wine, which I picked up the last time I was in England. Um, one of our viewers said, who's from Chile, he said, why don't you do a Chilean wine? Now, I have drunk chili and wine before um it's called mud house <laughs> yes and we'll see or not whether you're in the dog house uh -huh. <laughs> so you you seem like you've had a good week i have had a good week i've made progress i've i've just 
made a, a really bad mess with paint. <laughs> you can't have it all, can you? <laughs> distressed look, distressed wife. Oh, where did it end? Happy wife. Uh, uh, yeah. Happy, happy life. Happy life. <laughs> Not this week. <laughs> uh, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have, please click the like button. And if you're not yet a subscriber, why don't you click subscribe? You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Or on our website at, at www.theexpatbutchers.com. Nick doesn't like saying it, so we have this little thing every week of who's going to say it. <laughs> anyway, back to the why. You probably didn't notice because it happened so automatically. <laughs> It's a screw top wine, which is another thing you don't really find in France. So, was that a nice treat? <laughs> Any screws a treat. <laughs> cheers. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. And that is very nice. It is actually. See, the beauty of the screw top is allegedly you can put the bottle back in the fridge for tomorrow. I'm, I'm not a great lover of white, so... Pretty boots, love. It's a sunny day, so why not? Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye! <laughs>